everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having an unbelievable uh, day. Look, uh, I'm not going to take up too much of your time. Uh, before I get started, as always, I want to remind you that we are in the midst of a fundraiser. We do need your financial support to underwrite the work that we do in the community from our research center. hours of research. I've personally logged close to 80,000 hours of research and rapidly approaching 80 hours, 80,000 hours in research specifically uh, connected to uh, the black struggle. That's not all of my research. That's solely what I've invested in understanding the plight of my people uh, from 1619 to current. Um, and it has spearheaded research and program development in the areas of socialization, racial identity, education, uh, wealth building, uh, and so many more elements from the Black Man Lead Rite of Passage Initiative to help racially socialize young black males, uh, which decreases their chance of becoming violent, decreases uh, their risk of becoming incarcerated, increases their risk of becoming pro-social, and contributors to uh, the black community and so much more. I've been doing that for close to two decades. Uh, and I can go on and on about mental health programs. I wrote on, uh, I wrote an article today um, that I'm gonna have to post in this box a little later because I'm not at home, but I wrote an article today on uh, the uh, black women and depression. And we can talk about mental health issues across the board, regardless of gender, regardless of age. Uh, when it comes to our community, it's a taboo subject. We need to break that stick, break free of that stigma and deal with that. But I've done all of this work um, and we need your support to continue on with what we're doing. Uh, so if you believe in the work we're doing, if you follow me, you believe, we need you to go to the description box. Uh, don't don't casually pass this by. Don't look past it. We need you to go to the description box and determine which way you want to give. Whether you want to give via cat via, via the organization's cash app uh, account, whether you want to give uh, through the organization's direct processing, or if you want to give through GoFundMe. But you need to show some love and some support. All right. Here's one of the reasons why. What I want to talk to you about. Here's one of the reasons why. We are so under-resourced in so many different areas that we are needed, that we attempt to address. I'm that type of person. I don't like sending people. Well, I, I can't do it. You know, let me give you this. You know, that's just me. If a person comes to me to help, I'm going to do everything I can to help them. And so what that means is I'm often taken outside of the scope of what I specialize in and I'm pulled in other areas, which then lights a passion about what I find in that area. And it's like, okay, this can't go on. And so I'm that person. And, you know, people will say all day, well, you need just, you know, reel in, you can't do everything. No, I can't do everything. But what I will not do is sit around and just push people the other direction because it's the easiest thing to do. So uh, probably close to 15 years ago, I started writing about missing black females in the U.S. And at the time, it was somewhere around 60,000, 63, 64,000 black women missing. And I started to write about it because nobody was talking about it. It wasn't getting any play. And I started to write about it. It eventually built up steam. We're at 75,000 plus. And for a moment, you know, and I'm, I'm assuming some of it had to do with the pandemic for a moment, it seemed like those numbers were leveling off and you know, things were looking up, but they're starting to spike again. There is a spike in the number of black women, specifically black females. Um, when I say females, I mean in ages 12 and up uh, that are coming up missing. And the easy thing to do is to just dismiss it till they just checked out and they left, or it's a troubled child just running away and all that stuff. And, 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 and But they never come back. And we've got people that's been missing 10, 12, 15 years, and families are still, you know, longing. Uh, to me, that's almost worse than death because you don't know. You can't get any finality in just wondering where someone is at. And we are going to have to 
be more engaged about what's going on. Number one is we need to be more educated. We need to educate our children. We need to educate parents on awareness. We need to get out of this idea that we have to respect our teenagers' privacy to the point that they are doing things that we need to know about in order to protect them. My thing is when you have privacy is when you get up and you have your own, you do your own. That's your privacy. That's your space. But when I'm providing your space, when I'm providing your livelihood, you have privacy in the sense I'm not busting in your room, you know, while you're getting dressed or while you're doing whatever. But I want, I'm, I'm going to check your phone. I'm going to be eavesdropping on you. Uh, call me what you want to. I'm, first and foremost, we are not meant to be our children's friends. Now, we may at some point develop friendships with our children as they become adults and get older and they start to realize some of the things that we've been trying to tell them and they start to mature and that's that connect. But when they are in our home, we are meant to be their protectors. And often that's going to clash with this desire for them to liberate themselves from uh, our control. So our job isn't to facilitate their liberation. Our job is to protect them. We got to get that out. Number one is we've got to be aware of the things we look for, what things are out there. There are all kinds of things. The, you got to understand, first of all, there's so many different things happening that facilitate the the abduction of blacks. Number one is from a genetic perspective. The organs of blacks are highly sought after because we are uh, genetically the base. So our organs are almost uh, good fits for anyone within our blood type, regardless of race. So we're easy targets. Number That's the first thing is genetically that organ harvesting is a problem. And we have to be aware of that. Stop putting that you want to be an organ donor on your driver's license. Put it in your wallet. Tell somebody close to you. Uh, tell, tell the three closest people to you and tell them to keep it to themselves and do what you got to do from a legal perspective with your attorney, but don't put it on your driver's license. That's public record. Anybody can access it and it's noted that you are a donor. So now when someone needs that organ, you become a target. And it's not just people disappearing, it's a bunch of things where that are being contributed. There's regular car accidents and everything else that were actually purposely done. And it's 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 a big thing. And I know, you know, conspiracy theorists, blah, 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 whatever. I would, you know, just think about everything that I've been labeled a conspiracy theorist for over the last 20 years that not everybody's sitting in and looking and go, oh my God, I can't believe. It. Yeah. I mean, I take what I do seriously. I'm not one looking for stories for the sake of sensation. So I hardly talk about anything until I have a bunch of proof on what I'm talking about. So if I say something's happened, it's because I've watched it, I've studied it, I understand it. And I don't live in this glossy, rose-colored world where everything is perfect in the country I live in. is the best country in the world and they don't do anything wrong. Uh, look, rich people, white people, and even black people will do some pretty crazy wild things to get what they want. We don't live in a moral world. We were sold a moral standard to keep us focused. People do what they feel they can get away with for the most part. That's why I'm real big on applying consequences to negative actions. I'm not trying to, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to uh, sit up there and convince nobody not to do anything. You do it, that's gonna be a price to pay. All right, that's one thing. So you got the organ harvesting. The other thing is uh, human trafficking. Did you realize that human trafficking is the second largest illegal uh, industry, for lack of a better word, uh, revenue generating industry in the world behind uh, weapons, weapons uh, trafficking? That means that there's more money being made in human trafficking and sex trafficking than it is in dope trafficking. You always see the big dope bus and all that money. 
there's more money being moved from human trafficking than it is in that. And so people are literally being taken and we need to understand, uh, you know, what to protect our kids from, how it looks, how it sounds, uh, always be together in groups. Don't go anywhere by yourself. Uh, just so many things we need to educate, but what we cannot do is consistently move around so casually pretending that we are not noticing that our babies and our women are coming up missing. As black men, we've got to take it upon ourselves to be more aggressively in assertive in protecting. And, 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 and women, all this, I, I'm a grown person and you know why I got to do all this? There's a reason. There are certain things you're just not built to do when they snatch you up and pull you in there and, 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 and because you didn't want to have to tell somebody where you was going because you didn't want to have to tell somebody this, that, and blah, blah, blah. Then when you come up missing, nobody knows you missing for I don't know how long because nobody's expecting you because you don't want to share. It's just so much that we've got to do. That's better. So what I'm going to do is I am going to ask you to become more active. I'm going to uh, start sharing uh, little snippets of ways that we can counter this, ways we can do that. Get behind the programs that are out there that we are actively doing things to keep these kids safe. And if you know of somebody that's missing, get involved in the efforts to find them. A lot of times these kids are still alive and they're being moved around from city to city. It's our responsibility to do something to help them. Look, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here. Like I said in the beginning, we really need your support. If you believe in the work we're doing, look in the description box at the top of the description box and find the way that's best suited for you to give and show your love and support. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have a great day.